tour down under stage three, pretty hilly stage, maybe 50 riders left. This is the last climb, um, pretty much, before the before the finish. Now, the finish is the same as last year's tour down under stage uh, when it went on Norton Summit, but the finishing circuit is quite different. Uh, anyway, so it was raced pretty aggressively, but not crazy. Um, and basically, there are about 50, 60 riders left. This is the last climb, and Michelin Scott on the front just trying to set it up for Daryl MP. Sagan's there, usual favourites are there. A couple sprinters have been dropped, but Danny Van Poppel is there. Um, Patrick Bevan's there. Um, you can see Sagan, you can see Hessing, you can see Bennett, you can see Wout Pools. Pretty much everyone like you'd expect to be there is there, more or less. Uh, and Richie Port's on the right hand side of there. You can see Lucas Posselberger as well in the, um, in the Austrian National Champions jersey. Uh, so this, at the moment, it wasn't raised too aggressively. Um, basically, you've got a combination of riders, but S Team Sky now go with Kenny Ellison, the absolute legend. I love Kenny so much. He does follow me on Instagram. Good lad. Uh, anyway, Kenny goes um, mainly just to set up and make it a hard race for Wout Pools because in reality, it's going to be very hard for um, sprinters to like get dropped on this climb unless it's raced incredibly fast. Um, so basically, Kenny's trying to drag it, everyone out and make it really hard so then well, if Wout Pools can attack, he might be able to get some bonus seconds. Um, Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Now you can see Robert Hessing decides that it's time to go as well. Makes sense because um, Bennett's also in a good position to attack. And um, Hessing's probably a strong guy on the flat than Bennett. And also, I mean, Kenny, let's be honest, he's 52 kilos. It's going to be a tough one for him to make it go on the um, on the flat because this is a pretty downhill um, run in after this. So it now goes downhill and then there's a little kick up. And that's where I guess everyone thought they were going to attack. 2.6 kilometers to go. Um, this footage cuts out 1.7 kilometers to go, but I've got the footage from 1K. So we're going to miss about 700 meters, but nothing really happens in that time from what I can tell. Um, so yeah, down this part here, you'll see it's sort of like there's just one last kicker, maybe a minute, minute and a half or something. Um, I looked at Mike Wood's power and it's pretty solid um, for that minute, minute and a half. Kenny's looking aero, trying to get... I mean, he knows he's not going to be able to win this stage from here. Like, it's impossible because there's so many people who are fresh um, and, like, just really want to bring it back. Um, so you can see people are struggling at the back. Um, and you can see it just now kicks up. Watch on the left-hand side. Kenny just explodes pretty much. And uh, Mike Woods goes on the attack massively, hitting about 943 watts and held about 550 watts for a minute or so on Strava. You can see Sagan follows. Luis Leon Sanchez follows. Daryl Impey's in the wheel as well. Um, everyone else is basically following as well. Um, but it's not really a long enough climb or steep enough climb. Posselberger looks back trying to see if um, Sagan's there. Uh, Paddy Bevan's coming across. D Drew Stevenines, you can see in the quick step, he's pretty far ahead. He now decides to launch it because um, they're messing around. But in reality, it was never going to happen. Um, Mike Woods would get away just because it's just too fast on the downhill. Unless you had a 56 on the front and were really like riding full gas and the people behind were messing around. But it's such a fast run and it was just never really going to happen. Um, but yeah, Mike Woods put in a good effort, I guess hurt the legs a little bit, but Danny Van Poppel managed to make it over, um, and then from here, in about 200 metres, we're going to skip to 1k to go because there is no footage, um, unfortunately. But anyway, they turned right onto Green Hill Road, uh, and then the finish is in Uradler, up, up a hill, so it's sort of a down and up finish. They hit sort of 75, 80 k's an hour in, at the bottom, and then it, it slowly ramps up. So 1k to go, Michigan Scott on the front, Darren MP second wheel, Lewis Liz Sanchez, Peter, Peter Sagan, um, Danny Van Poppel, Paddy Bevan. Uh, all there. Um, we've also got Valgren, who I believe is in the mix. Uh, but in reality, Daryl MP takes over super early and just sprints. And then Sagan comes past him pretty easy, um, to be honest. And Luis Leo Sanchez managed to get off just past Paddy Bevan, Danny Van Poppel, um, are all there or thereabouts. Jan Polinch, I believe, gets third. But Sagan takes that very, very easy. I mean, when you look at the, the highlights, um, it's a super, super fast sprint. And the draft on like 75k an hour sprint is just must be unbelievable. Um, so yeah, that's why Darren P let out too early. Sagan got it in the end, and Luis Leon Sanchez is looking solid as well. Um, so yeah, so far I guess Sagan, Luis Leon Sanchez, um, Darren MP, they're all looking solid. Uh, everyone else finished the same time. James Knox, my boy, he finished in there. And Pog Pogasar actually did finish top 10, the guy I made a video about the other day who won Tour de Lavenir. So it's all, all looking good for Tour Down Under. Um, tomorrow's uh, flat, flat stage, no, tomorrow's corkscrew, then flat stage, then um, then Wolango. So yeah, it should be pretty exciting. Uh, and to tour down under. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this bit, um, and I'll have another one tomorrow.